I'm a follower of Jesus. It's the most important thing in my life. The most healing, healthy thing for the human brain is a belief in God and prayer. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Lloyd, and welcome to the Spiritual Laws of Nature. Uh, I call the spiritual law today risk outcome. Okay? Uh, what is that? Well, it's a, it's a term used a lot in the business world, in the, in the uh, construction world. Uh, it, is the, it is the entire insurance industry. The, the whole insurance in industry is totally about risk outcome. The entire security industry uh, system industry and police departments and military and all of those things are about security. Okay, so insurance and security. What are both of those things managing? What is the risk? What is the risk outcome that we're managing? Pain. And 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 uh, if something negative happens that your insurance ends up paying something for, it probably caused pain. If there was a problem with security in your life, can almost guarantee that it caused some pain. For most of the clients I've had, this has been their number one sort of uh, program they go through their day with. Okay, manage risk outcome. Okay, and and risk outcome is pain on one side. So prevent pains that we've experienced in the past or ones that we imagine experiencing, whether we ever remotely will or not, in the future, okay? So it's managing pain. It's also managing pleasure. Pleasure that I already have in my life that I don't want to lose. Uh, drinking, uh, smoking, uh, uh, um, being in a comfortable temperature, having a nice house, having clothes I like, uh, eating food I like, being with people I like, all right? That's pleasure. So pleasure can be protecting pleasures you already have. They can also be going to get pleasures that you think you would like to add to your life. And here's the thing about that. As soon as you think about a pleasure that you're thinking about doing or adding to your life, your unconscious mind treats it as if you own it now. Why? Because it doesn't differentiate between past, present, and future. So when you ma imagine getting a pleasure in the future, to your unconscious mind, which is in control of all your nervous system and everything, to your unconscious mind, we have it now. Which means if I actually go live my life into the future and that doesn't happen, I experience it as a loss. And I will probably do some amount of grieving for losing that uh, based on how strong the feeling of ownership and pleasure I had anticipated. Okay, so risk outcome management is about managing pain and managing pleasure. And for most people, that is their number one program running all through the day. If it's not number one, it's almost certainly number two. And as soon as anything in my life becomes threatening or painful, painful in any way, emotionally or physically, all right, I don't get the parking place I wanted. That's pain. All right, and that pain we react or or try to manage it in some way, and we try and in risk outcome we try to plan so that it doesn't happen. But then if it does happen, risk outcome comes in and tries to minimize it. And then the same with the pleasure, either keeping and not losing or going and getting, where I already have ownership. So no matter what happens now, that's likely to cause pain. Our fight or flight system that if you followed me at all, you know 95 plus percent of all illness and disease is connected to stress. That's not news to anybody. We've known that for 30, 40 years. Okay? Um, so, if, if 
the number one protective system, the number one priority system, because if fight or flight is kicked in, it means that is the number one priority. All right? Because it puts digestion on hold, it puts immune system on hold, it puts thinking on hold, it puts almost everything on hold for the sake of whatever this pain is that's happening right now and to try to fight it, run away from it, or freeze and hope it just kind of goes by. All right? So that tells you the importance in how we're built that that number one system that has priority over everything else is tied to risk outcome. All right? Um, The problem with that, you say, what's the problem? Don't we want to go through life and be safe? Don't we want to experience as little pain as possible? Well, yeah, for most of my life I would have agreed with the second one. I still agree with the first one. We're not talking about going and jumping out of uh, airplanes or, or walking along a board 100 feet up. I mean, we're not, ta- we're not talking about that kind of risk, just going crazy. I, 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 never, I would never advocate that. We're talking about the risk of loving. Why? Because without risk, there's no love. Love is always a risk. Because you are opening yourself up, acting unselfishly toward this person, and that makes you vulnerable. Vulnerable to what? Vulnerable to risk. Vulnerable to pain. Okay? So, to love is to not put risk outcome at first. It's to put whatever the good for that person that's the object of my love. First, even if it means pain to me. Okay? That's what real love is. If, if the love is off, if it causes me any pain, that's not love. All right? Love means no, no, no safety net, no time limit, forever, no matter what. That, that, that is real love. Now, there's fake love, but we're not talking about that. That's real love. Okay? So there's no, there's no love if you're 100% about risk outcome. So where do you fall on that? All right? Do you go through your day and it all, it's, it's 90%, which is true for most people, about pain pleasure? All right? Then you're probably managing risk outcome in your life, either as number one or number two. But the problem is, and, and, and they're pretty proportionate, meaning if you're 100% risk outcome, you probably got almost no real love in your life at all. And the love you call love is conditional on them behaving right, which means it's not love. It's a business deal. All right? But 100% risk outcome, almost no love. 80% risk outcome, maybe 20% love. risk outcome, maybe 40%. It's not exact, but there's a pretty good correlation there. All right? So my question is, how much love do you want? And in a way, that choice is directly proportional to how little you are willing to bring down as a priority risk outcome in your life, which means you have to give up the end result to God, whether it's exactly what you wanted or not. You have to give up the end result, and you have to be okay with pain. Uh, M. Scott Peck, who wrote The Road Less Traveled, huge bestseller, great book, wrote another book where he talked about to get to Uh, the destination we all want to get to. To get to your best life or as close as you can to it, you have to go through chaos. You have to. There's no other road. Every road to your best life goes through chaos. And 90% of people, when they hit chaos, they turn around and go back. And they may do that several times in their life but typically they never 
elect to go through chaos to get to the other side. Why? Because chaos is painful. All right? And that violates our risk outcome number one priority if that's where we are. So to get through, to get to your best life, you have to say, you know what? Risk outcome is not the priority in my life. If, if something comes up where that is a big issue, okay, I'll go take a look at risk outcome. But day in, day out, moment in, moment out, I, I'm going for as close to 100% love as I can, which means minimizing risk outcome maybe as much as I can, unless it's in a physical life or death situation. And again, that's not what I'm talking about here. All right? So rather than managing risk outcome, I would suggest every day to check in, take your temperature, am I managing not risking today? And you should be every day. The more you manage not risking, which means I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I'm going to risk in love as as much as I possibly can, all right? That is managing not risking. So instead of managing risk outcome, I think we ought to be managing every day not risking. And for the sake of those we love, for the sake of love, because we're built this way in our brain and nervous system, I'm going to risk love more and more, as close to 100% as I can get. And that will take me through the chaos. And chaos either mean the pain from chaos is either something's wrong that needs to be fixed, or I need to learn something here. And you have to fix both of those. Sometimes it's both of them. You have to fix both of those before you can get through chaos to the other side. All right? So anytime pain comes, take a look at those. Is something wrong that I need to fix? Or do I need to learn something here? Because this may be an opportunity for me to go up to the next higher level in my life by risking being okay with the pain, this kind of pain, and choosing to risk love more and more and more. The most famous passage about love in the Bible, and in fact the entire world, says love suffers all things. There may not be anything else in the world that does suffer all things. It may cause you to suffer a thing, this thing, for a certain period of time, but the Bible says love suffers all things. Okay? Because I'm not managing risk outcome, which means I'm going to be getting pain and less pleasure at times. But I'm going to get more and more and more love. And when I hit chaos, I'm not going to turn around and go back. I'm going to say, what needs to be fixed? What can I learn from this? And hang on and love through the pain. Get through chaos and keep risking every day in those same kind of ways to get to your absolute best life. So in, I would say instead of managing risk outcome, every day you need to make sure you are managing not risking. Thanks so much. Have a great day.